Erosion is a significant issue in the urban landscape. One of the most effective tools at our disposal in the fight against erosion is the strategic use of plants. Through their root systems and their ground cover, plants can significantly reduce the rate of erosion, stabilizing the soil and protecting the landscape. All too often as a maintenance horticulturist, I've seen poorly designed landscapes that encourage the soil to wash or blow away day by day and year by year, simply because the wrong plants were chosen. Certain plants play a better role at controlling erosion than others. Their root systems help bind the soil, preventing it from being washed or blown away. On top of the root system, the ground cover provided by the above ground parts of these plants protect the soil from the direct impact of rain as well as sunlight, reducing the likelihood of erosion. Todd Late and Ian Pannanen began scientifically testing different plants for erosion control in 2007. They found that the fibrous roots of strappy plants and grasses tend to strengthen the soil more than other plant types. Here are some of the best plants that they've tested for erosion control of the top 200 mil of the soil profile. Of course, trees with deeper roots are also required to hold the deeper layers of the soil profile together. Katie Bell's Lamandra Hystrix. Katie Bell's Lamandra is an Aussie native with robust characteristics. It tolerates part shade and produces highly perfumed flowers, adding to the sensory appeal of any garden or landscape design. It's versatile and can be used in a variety of settings, from garden beds to pathways, and can even be used in soggy conditions due to its tolerance of wet feet. Katie Bell's Lamandra strengthens the soil up to 285%. Shara Lamandra fluvialtalis. Shara Lamandra is a tough, fine leaf plant with blue-grey tones. It's well suited to humid climates and heavy soils, making it ideal for many Australian garden climates, especially in Brisbane. It produces yellow flowers and is perfect for mass planting, borders and roadside landscapes. It strengthens the soil up to 225%. Queen Mum Agapanthus orientalis. Typical of other Agapanthus varieties, Queen Mum Agapanthus has glossy green foliage, but this one can actually tolerate frost, drought and humidity. It also shows excellent disease tolerance. This is another one that can be used as a border plant in mass plantings or as a single feature in a garden bed due to its beautiful purple and white flower umbels. Nerdy plants are often easier for landscape architects to specify due to external pressures and maybe even your own preferences. But this is an excellent option for when you don't have to choose a native because it's been widely used without invasive problems. And it really puts on a show when it flowers in the warmer months. Queen Mum Agapanthus strengthens the soil by up to 283%. Nephray Penicetum. Nephray Penicetum is a native grass with a finer texture than most, and it's more compact. It's a hardy plant that thrives in most Aussie climates, including in Brisbane, and has excellent drought tolerance. Again, use Nephray Penicetum as a border plant in mass plantings for ground cover, or as a feature in rockeries. Nephray Penicetum strengthens the soil up to 475%. Lucia Dianella cerulea. Lucia Dianella has deep green foliage and produces blue and purple flowers and berries, typical of Dianellas. It's another one that's perfect for borders, mass planting, or as a contrasting plant in mixed landscapes. This is the best longest performing Dianella that we've come across for Queensland. It strengthens the soil up to 433%. Breeze Dianella cerulea. Breeze Dianella is a fast establishing plant that fills gaps and outcompetes weeds. This plant is suitable for ground cover, borders, or in containers for patio design, even though you're probably not looking for erosion control in your containers. It strengthens the soil by up to 297%. Little Jess Dianella cerulea. Little Jess Dianella is one of our best sellers. It's a dwarf plant with those purple flowers and purple berries and short compact canes. It's ideal for small spaces and can be used in mass plantings, borders, and can thrive in full sun or in even heavy shade beneath trees. This one only strengthens the soil by up to 181% because it's quite small. Aussie Rambler Carpabrotus. The native Aussie Rambler pig face is a prostrate creeping succulent with long trailing stems and deep pink flowers that are quite massive. It's an excellent ground cover plant and is perfect for rockeries, coastal land landscapes and rooftop gardens. Its succulent nature makes it highly drought resistant, which is an added benefit in many Australian gardens. Use this plant on low angled slopes, but never on steep embankments. Its roots aren't that deep and it can get quite heavy, meaning that it's gonna slide down a steep embankment. Its main erosion benefits come from shielding the soil surface. Further research is needed for this plant's erosion control abilities. King Alfred Dianella cerulea. I saved the most impressive erosion controlling plant until 
to last. The aptly named King Alfred Dianella blows almost any other plant out of the water in terms of soil erosion control. The only catch is that it needs to be pruned back hard every couple of years to prevent it becoming overgrown and then dying back. It's not a low maintenance plant and it can be shorter lived. So you may want to go for a plant that's longer lived even if it has lower erosion control if you're looking for a high performing plant. This one strengthens the soil by up to 752%. When selecting plants for erosion control, several factors have to be taken into consideration. The soil type is crucial, as different plants thrive in varying soil conditions. For example, some plants prefer sandy soils, while others do well in loamy or even clay soils. Some plants do better with wet feet, others can't tolerate constant moisture at all. Climate is another essential factor. The selected plants should be able to withstand your local climatic conditions. For example, in Brisbane, plants that are drought tolerant and can handle high humidity are often the most successful. Aesthetics shouldn't be overlooked either. While the primary purpose of your planting may be erosion control, your chosen plants should also contribute to the overall visual appeal of the landscape design. Consider factors such as the plant's colour, texture, size and flowering period to bring joy to your designs. The use of plants for erosion control is more than just a necessity. It's an opportunity to contribute positively to the environment and to create stunning landscapes. As we've seen, the right plants can not only protect the soil, but also enhance the aesthetic appeal of a space. If you're a landscape architect, you have the power to shape our environment. Instead of specifying the same boring plants time and time again, I'd like to encourage you to continue learning about different plant species and experiment for how they can be used for erosion control. All it takes is 5% of your plant palette to consist of novel and yet tested cultivars to really make an impact.